Welcome to As the Story Grows. I'm Brian Patton. Today, I'm stoked to welcome Miss May I vocalist Levi Benton to the podcast. Miss May I just released a re-recorded 15th anniversary celebration of Apologies are for the Week on Solid State Records. Levi talks about signing with Solid State, the process of re-recording the band's debut and guest spots on the record, how the Ohio bands pushed each other thinking the band was coming to an end, and more. Thank you so much for checking out this episode of As the Story Grows. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. Thanks for listening. You can find links in the show notes to our asthestorygrows.com, to our Discord server and podcast community, for our mailing list over on Substack, or you can support the show financially on Patreon. If you think somebody might enjoy this episode or might enjoy the podcast as a whole, I would love it if you shared with them. And the easiest thing you could do to say, hey, I like what you're doing, is to hit the subscribe button and never miss an episode. Enjoy today's chat with Levi from Miss May I. You still kicking it up in Ohio? Yeah, I'm actually a poser. I'm in uh, northern Kentucky, so I'm like two blocks over the river. Okay, okay, nice, nice. I say but Cincinnati, you're... but yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's in talking to people and, and as a person who just talks to people all around the world, sometimes it's easiest just to be like this big city that you heard of and yeah. not whatever small suburb, <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm four blocks. I could hit it with a rock if I wanted to. Yeah. Just, yeah, right. I'm like, I can train into DC. That counts. Like, <laughs> if you could take public transportation in, and that you it counts. <laughs> uh, how's it going this morning? Good, man. Got my coffee, getting started at work, and yeah, it's cruising. Nice. I've got. I drank my uh, country Kool Aid, so I like. I've just been <laughs> on a country kick the last like this whole year, so I'm just blasting country back here in my office. Nice. Nice. What, what got you in a country? What was the thing that like, I don't know. So, was there... so I'm like, a, I'm a web developer, okay. um, mainly for musicians and entertainment. Um, just cause obviously I know that world. Um, and I was doing Bailey Zimmerman before he was ginormous. Um, I was doing all his stuff and, uh, I listened to artists when I, um, yeah, when I work, yeah, so I get the vibe and he was like modern country. And I was like, this is pretty cool. <laughs> Then I ended up going to Morgan Wallen this year, and I'm like, I like, I'm definitely the top forty country, like that okay. cheesy stuff. But I love that. I'm a, I've always been a cheese ball. So, my wife's from Kentucky too, so she thinks I'm like so soft. She's like, this isn't even the good stuff. She like, <laughs> like real deep stuff. I'm like, whoa, okay. Uh, nice, nice. Let's. Uh, I want to talk about this new record. So I, we could talk about the band's long history, but let's talk about. Uh, Miss May I signing with Solid State. How did you end up with Solid State Records? Yeah, so um, every time we switch uh, labels, it's never like we didn't like a label or move families because yeah. of that. It's just we've been a band for so long, and I think we're just so ADD and like we're like I don't know, we're we're psychos to where we just need like a change of environment all the time. Uh, yeah. So that's really why we always change it up. It's just like, oh, what can we do different? Uh, what, what, like, how can we mix it up the next time? Because usually we'll always sign for like two or three albums. And that's like our max. Um, and yeah, our contract was up at Sharp Tone. We were shopping around, and um, one of the the different things in our career right now is we're all dads, yeah. and because of that, we don't want to stop doing what we love to do in miss may i um which a lot of people that's like they're put out the torch when that time of life comes and um we really went against the grain and we're like how can we make this work um mm -hmm. so like our first tour is back i'll get to li the labels that's coming but our first tour is back sure. we uh, started taking um our kids come out and tour with us now so we actually just went through the schedule today of like now there's three kids, so it's like there's <laughs> kids on this on the bus at these times of the tour, like chunks. Um, yeah. And it's it's awesome because you enjoy it a whole different way. But it's a little bit less touring right now, just because the age um, touring ramps up the older they get. Yeah. Um, 
but going to a label and obviously tours sell albums, that's not obviously the most appetizing thing to all these labels, right. uh, especially Miss Maya has such a commercial name. They're like, but we're going to sell, 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 do this, this. And they're like, ah, it's a little different right now. Like, cause we <laughs> used to be known for touring 10 months a year. So yeah. long story short, when we, we talked to a few labels and we really hit it off with solid state because they were just so, um, open to us being us, uh, yeah. and, uh, like really just do whatever we wanted to do. And they just like, just make music. Well, you guys do it on your own time, blah, blah, blah. And that was like, that was amazing. Like, not that we've ever really had like chains or been like shackled to like following this, like, um, political thing. It's just, there's always red tape and they had the least amount of red tape. And, okay. um, and they're just so cool. Like that Miss May I space website we released was like, we didn't even have to ask for approval. They're just like, do whatever you guys want to do, like put it up. And like me, so we developed it and made it on our own. And, uh, it was just cool to be able to do that. It feels like we're 16 again, which is funny because we're releasing this album we did when we were 16. Yeah. <laughs> so, and we have a new lineup. So it is like a, we actually feel it's like a been a big boost of energy in the band. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's, and they've been awesome. And we're excited to do more stuff with them. Like we're just riffing ideas all the time with them. And, uh, and it's just outside the box. Like I said, we've been around so long. It's cool for them to be like, throw something at the wall. Like, is this weird? I'm like, this is weird. Let's try this. This is yeah. this, it's different. So nice. Nice. Oh, I've asked this question of a couple of your new new label mates now. Uh, I'll ask it of you. Is there any hesitation with coming to Solid State Records because they have this like, you know, Christian record label background? Obviously, that's not who they are now. But like, does that come with like, oh, if we do sign this label, people will think X. I know Miss May I and the Rise record scene from like that yeah. heyday came with the Christ core label, whether people were or not. Right. <laughs> like, well, so I don't know how much uh, truth and where this came through our email threads with them. But one of the things that made us really interested in going with them as well was they were wanting to sort of show that they're not just a Christian label. Yeah. And I think that's why the deal was so great as well was like, they wanted to work with us as, as much as we didn't work with them because it was like, Hey, it's really going to like show people that we're doing something different. And we're not just a Christian label anymore. Yeah. So, um, that was also exciting. Cause I like, it goes into us just like mixing things up or so we're mixing things up for them to be like, Hey, we dropped the F bomb. Like we'll be on your, <laughs> we'll be on your label. I like, could change it up. So, cause I think they wanted it as much as we wanted it. It's just yeah. to, like, show that it's different. Let's talk about this new album, Apologies for the Week, 15th Anniversary Edition. What was the genesis for wanting to re-record this album and give it a second life? Man, so we almost did it with the Monument. Um, and then we ended up, like, logistically didn't work. And so, like, we always were excited about anniversary albums. And not even excited, but, like, it works in our schedule right now because our of our activeness. It's, like, a nice, like give people something and like do something interactive. That's not going to really be such a, a time sucker, like writing a new album at this yeah. point in our lives. Um, and the only hard thing was because we're psychos and we also <laughs> want to do stuff different. We're like, we can't just do re-release, which made like the label management. were obviously the happiest. Cause we're just like, we're not just going to put it out and like, Oh, it'd be easy to put it out. We're like, yeah, but like what, like we're, it's like looking at like a whiteboard. You're like, but what is going to be different? Like, yeah, because everyone does this all the time, especially our age. Like the bands that have stuck around, we're all in our anniversary ages. So it's like, right, we really, really stick to stick it out. Um, and yeah, I had the idea of like, let me just ask all the homies. Um, and they all have like sentimental values of different reasons. So okay. Um, and yeah, it was just so. It's so funny because everyone was like, did not think it was possible. They're like, because. And me being lead singer, lead singers are a headache. I will be <laughs> that I, I'm a headache at most of the times. And I was, they're like, 10 singer, like the schedules is going to be crazy. Like it's going to cost a fortune. And I was like, no, like, I think it'll, it'll be fine. And like over the weekend, it was like a Friday by Monday. I was like, everybody said it was cool. We'll have it in a week. And like nobody <laughs> asks for anything. They're like, dude, whatever you need. Like they're all just like great nice. friends, great family. 
Um, and yeah, it was literally like overnight. Um, there were a couple that we had like move around because of schedules, but other than that, it was just like, it just really, it was really humbling because when we announced that, or when I was telling those guys like, Hey, this is for this album. And I never called it a re-recording or re-track. I just call it a celebration. I was like, it's just, we're going to celebrate it. We're going to have some friends on there. And everyone was just like, dude, whatever you need. I love that album. I can't wait. Um, and yeah, it was cool. The younger bands that grew up on it too, like Silent Planet and, um, Currents, like yeah. to them, it was cool. Cause they're like, no shit. I love this. <laughs> I'm like, this will be awesome. I was like, yeah, let's do it. So it, yeah, it was cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. It seems like there's a lot of bands of that era re-recording albums, whether it's the Taylor Swiftification of music of just like, we now own the rights to this thing that we lost it. Like that is the silver lining it. too. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know. Cause I think MXPX did that with life in general. They're like, we re-recorded the album. Please just listen to our version. So we get the Spotify royalties on it and not like, some label that we've never were a part of now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who uh, did the uh, kind of redesign of the album artwork? So we went back to Dan Mumford, the guy who did the first artwork um, at the time when he originally did it, he was like just a punk rock doing metal bands, uh, did a bunch of big metal bands. Like we had ours. So did they remember? And so did Prada. So all three of us used him at the time. Oh. A lot of people, I think Fit for King ended up using them, but that he was like that guy. And then over the years, he's became Disney, Ghostbusters, Universal, like huge yeah. rock star artist. So sending that text was like into the void of like, please, 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 please text me back. Because I haven't talked to him in like a decade. So I just sent it out there. And, and he was the same thing. He's like, I would love to be a part of this. Anything you guys need. Um, he did it like with a homie hookup. Because um, I'm like, guys, this might be like, we might need like a Disney budget to ask <laughs> to bust out some stuff and he was just so cool and um even his sketches coming back he like sketched it out in like a week and it was just he's just he's a maniac so um and we let him have creative control this time as well because that's what he did the first time he sort of we wanted the lion but he sort of made like the first impression of like us having a lion re reoccurring throughout the yeah. band so nice nice how did you uh decide who all you wanted to come and guest on the different tracks like <laughs> you said there's something special but like yeah, yeah. So, um, so there's like little chunks. So there's like, um, like the biggest ones were like Impending Doom, Bleeding Through, and Carnifex. Those guys took us out in our first tour on this album. So like, I those guys for sure I wanted to be on here because they were headlining our first shows right when we went out of the gate. Um, and then it was cool because Impending Doom they were like playing reunion shows and doing new music now, but it was sort of like bringing them out of retirement. Like I was, <laughs> I was like hitting up Brooke. I'm like, come on, dude. Like you still got it, let's go. Um, and he was so stoked to do it. Um, and then we then so we got that. That was like a portion. Yeah. Um, and then another portion of it was like we should get bands that were inspired by it because um, there's all these like young bloods that are like like we took Currents out in their first U.S. tour, their first European tour. And now they're taking us out to Europe because they're like juggernauts now. Yeah, so yeah. Like, roles get reversed. It's awesome. And uh, so we want to hit up like the young guys. Um, that it, that we knew they were inspired by it just from conversations yeah. we've had. Um, so that's like where we got that. And then same with the fit for King, even though we're like the same age and they came up behind us. So they like, uh, tuck, uh, Kurt, or yeah, tuck. He was telling me this cool story of like, he sold tickets to play for us on that tour. Uh, <laughs> we opened it. So he's like, it's a cool full circle to actually like play with you guys or sing on this album because I remember selling tickets to play with you guys. Um, so those are those few dudes. And then um, our last, well, our last night goes sort of into the bucket of like, we did our first tours with them at that time. Um, and then we were, there were some bands that we were inspired by, like after the burial um, and Oxford's red, uh, those guys, like we, a lot of this album is like us jamming them as like high schoolers and we're going in to write our first album. So yeah. um, hit them up because now we're just so close and homies uh, just went back to hit them up and yeah, they were all for it as well. So nice. It's a little full circle. Yeah. Because you're approaching this album that you wrote when you were a teenager, was it tough to like get back in that head space as a lyricist where you're just like, ugh, I want to change these words up to, so they sound better? <laughs> yeah, well, it's funny because it, it was, I was definitely a skeptic going into it. Like, I think all of us were until we actually did our parts. Yeah. <laughs> like, part of us was like, this is stupid. This is stupid. No one's going to like this. We're going we're gonna to ruin it. Because it, 
for some reason that album just has like a special aura throughout mm-hmm. metalcore and we're like do not mess it up do not mess it up like if we if you don't want to touch like the genie in the bottle you're like yeah. uh so we were all definitely skeptics and then going i remember my first line i did i was like oh my god this was a great idea and it also made me feel like i was like that i remember it like just brought me back like a time warp of like where i was when we were doing that. I'm like, oh yeah because i've like some of that stuff we faded away like I don't do highs as much because just like we're just going with the times. So it was cool to like sort of go back to like our roots. Um, and it felt like I said, new lineup on this. Um, there's new technology. So just, it was so re- rejuvenating. Um, and I didn't know what I was doing. A lot of the parts on that album <laughs> are like computer generated because we're like, we never toured. It was like, we went from high school, did this album and then went on our first tour. So like, we've never played more than two days in a row yeah. and then we're going on a 40 day tour. So like, we're like, Oh, I will learn how to do this. And then we would try it. And then we'd screw with it on the computer. Like that sounds like a low. Cause I didn't know how to do those. <laughs> we would like pitch shift my voice. Um, oh, so it was cool to go back and know what I'm doing. And hit yeah. the parts. Um, some of it's so obscure, which I'm excited to like sort of revisit as a, there's a lot of parts I'm excited to revisit in our new music that we're doing with our new lineup. Um, because I just miss it. And there's so much innocence in it that I think like that makes miss may I like, I don't know if people go back and think about this, but that whole album isn't structured because we didn't know what we were doing. So no parts repeat. It's like an EDM song. It's like <laughs> there's eight parts of a song and they're just smashed together and that's it. There's no choruses or verses. Mm-hmm. And then like when we went in, there's a couple of those on there, but it's because we had to write them in the studio and the producer only knows how to write structure because that's his job. So he's like, Oh, this is a verse. It repeats. We're like, you play it again later. He's like, yeah. And you change it. I'm like, what the hell is happening? <laughs> this is so different. Yeah. Um, and now all of our songs are structured because like not to get onto the radio, you have to have that, but like you sort of have to play ball to do these like yeah. other things. So it was cool to like destructure and be like, Oh yeah, we used to be fucking hooligans and just play. <laughs> we just be like, that's a cool riff. We'll just throw yeah. the song. Like, it doesn't matter how we'll like do a transition to it. And then it'll be your part. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it was cool. And then the obscurity of just the lyrics, like I'm excited to, to go back and do that. Cause there was always a vague meaning, but like at that point in our careers, it was about like, how insane can you say this? And will it look cool in a t-shirt? Like that's all we thought about. So yeah. like, this would be the meaning. And you're like, how many insane words that <laughs> could I say to mean this thing? And like, that's just how we wrote lyrics. Then. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, but, I mean, it's that time. Like if define the great line is like the greatest album of all time at that moment, those songs are phenomenal, but what the fuck are any of them about? Like, <laughs> Dude, I know even me doing the vocals on apologies. I'm like, what was I even? I, I took, it took me a couple times to be like, why was I trying to get across? I'm like, oh yeah, this was. <laughs> and it's funny too, not to like sp- spinball on it, but like, yeah, <laughs> the first three songs are from our EP, mm-hmm. and then songs seven through ten, or song uh, four through ten, we had had to write in the studio because we ran out of songs. Oh man, so like, <laughs> we didn't know what we were doing. So like, um. And the obscurity, co- like the lyrics start making sense. The structure starts coming mm-hmm. in all the way to forgive and forget. Uh, be- and there's the track listing literally is just what we had. We didn't know yeah. what we were doing for track listing. We're just like, here's our first. And we ran out of songs. And like what we pressed for everyone to listen to was just how we did it in the studio, like oh, wow. on the computer. We just hit print. And we're like, that's our album. Uh, <laughs> so you can like hear us get better as musicians towards the end of the record or get more structured. But uh, yeah, it's sort of fun to... Yeah, I don't know. I'm excited for people to hear new stuff because we're like, what if we just like take away all the blueprints of what you're supposed to do? And like, because that's what made us a big local. Like what got everyone's attention initially was that kind of music, you know, yeah. like we were just a local band screwing around and people we were selling out and uh, headlining all the local shows. So we're like, what if we just and then the, the reaction, we have more plays and we've sold more merch on these releases than we have in our whole career. Like main stage on warp tour cover yeah. of every magazine in 2012 like nothing beats what we just have done so we're like maybe maybe we <laughs> should like break away the blueprint and just like show off again um so yeah. i don't know it's really brought us back to life so yeah yeah i mean it's definitely a, a product of the time and error i asked uh mike from prada about this and chris uh from like moth to flames but what was it in your opinion about like that columbus dayton like ohio scene that like either got the attention of rise or just got the attention of the metalcore community at the time because it's like it's so that crazy. scene was popping off like every man was from fucking ohio 
it's weird. It, dude, it's so funny too. Cause like, you don't obviously we didn't know, especially without social media being what it is now. Like if you don't see the reaction, we're just yeah. playing shows and like we'll tour with bands from Japan, Australia, Europe. And everyone was like watching Dayton. And it was like, it's like telling them campfire stories now. Cause you're like, Oh yeah, we're just like, and they're like, know the venues. They know the shows. I'm like, how did you know that that broad <laughs> show happened? Um, I don't know what it is. It's like, uh, I do think it's like, it's sort of a parallel, like how Seattle, it's like, it's just a really grim place. Yeah. It's very grim and like, it's gray nine months of the year. So it is like a grim, there is like a darkness and like a sort of like a Sweden, like the black metal bands, like, there is, unless you're big enough and strong enough to play sports, yeah. you're in a metal band because you're so sad you can't <laughs> play in, with sports and have friends and be with the girls. You're just like, yeah. and you're just in the garage, like pissed off. Um, so I think there's some of that. And I think um, there's just so much time. I, I, this is pre social media. So there was just so much time to where people could like really. And, and I would say this too, because like we, when we play with bands that were further from the West or East, like, I think we were just because there's nothing going on like and it's all guys like i said who didn't play sports like every metal band was just tall skinny lanky guys that were like didn't make the football team or didn't make yeah. baseball. and uh because that's what you do in ohio you like you just you play sports or you do this um or you skateboard and it's like i think there was just so much time to spend on our instruments that like when we go to play shows it wasn't like we were playing for the crowds we were yeah. playing for the other bands and just showing off and being like how much better can we be at our music? And not like that, not that it was competition. It was just right. like, how much better can we be at our music, um, instruments on this next song we're going to write? It's like literally every time we finish a song, we go play with other local bands and be like, dude, he did this key of a, sw- of like, of a sweep and stuff. We're like, we should, and then we go to practice and be like, how did they, oh, that's how they did it. And we're like, maybe we put our spin on it. And everyone was just trying to get really good at their instruments. Like if you hear, there's other bands that people don't talk about it, like, whoa, it's tyrants from the shallows at the throne of judgment. Like, these bands were playing like, like some of those guys became music teachers, like <laughs> after, like after their metal bands, it's like yeah. people were just shredding and like yeah, even vocal wise. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. And even like vocal wise and stuff, it was like, how many different like ranges can I do in one line? Like it was just, it literally was just showing off for other, fr- and then like people were there buying shirts and like the shows were cool, but like, it really wasn't about that. It was just hanging out with your homies and being like, like backstage, you're like, like just shredding and trying <laughs> to just go crazy. of existence uh 2022 your previous album had been 2017 how much like when covid and lockdowns happen are you guys as a band just like okay what's the next step like do you was there a point where you're not sure if you're going to continue oh my gosh yeah 2000 it was very hard that's sort of why we don't have some of the guys that are with us now because like they were addressing that that sort of conflict then you know like and then we pushed through, did the album, and then they're, they're just so conflicted that, like, they went and did their own things, which is totally fine. Um, it definitely messed us up because, like, at least for our band, we started so young, and that's all we did. Yeah. Literally, like, we lived on the road for 10-plus years, and then everything stopped. So, like, we didn't have backup plans. We didn't have, like, money saved up. We didn't have anything. So we all got rocked. And then we had kids at the same time because we we're like, oh, life's slowing down. And we have a lot of time of life slowing down. So we're like, I had my kid prior to that. Um, my first kid prior to that. Uh, so mine was, my thing was a little bit different. I was already planning on not slowing down touring, but like, Hey guys, I'm going to like start doing the family stuff and the band. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It was, uh, it was really hard. That's like a lot of, even doing that album was so hard because like, I'm like on the phone with my wife, there's like a screaming kid in the back and I'm like trying to help. And then I'm, tracking vocals and saying like two minutes later and I'm going back. It's all this new stuff that we've never so much responsibility. We never really had to deal with prior yeah. to doing that album. Um, yeah. Cause like, it would, like interviews like this, it'd be like, yeah, dude, look me up all day. Like all I do is band stuff. Now it's like, like <laughs> I talked to tour, like our PR now and it's like, 
well, I got daycare drop off here. I'm like, I got, like gymnastics. Yeah. I'm like, I got these things. I'm like <laughs> thinking about stuff. So that's how that album was. Um, and I think a lot of the lyrics really come across in that. Um, it's very like parents heavy, but um, yeah, I think it really made us just, I don't know, sort of like realize the real world. I I always tell people it was like, we grew up in one month. Like we grew up 10 years of growing up in like one month, like what yeah. happened. Cause we were just like, hooligans like a bunch of best friends from high school that just were like living the dream and then yeah like real life hit us and then like real bills hit us and money stopped in the band you're just like whoa this is we gotta like buckle up and do real stuff so um and i think yeah the two guys aren't with us now uh yeah just that that sort of had a big thing to play with them and um and, and the other, the good, there's a, there's just as much good as bad that came from it too. Yeah. The other good thing is like, what you hear in the album is like, uh, it just humbled us. Like we never knew how cool Miss Mayor was really until it all stopped. Yeah. We never had time to like sit back and look at it. So when we sat, like when everything stopped and you got to really digest what was happening, you're like, whoa, this is, we're very lucky that this happened and like, we're very thankful. So that was that was the other thing. And like, that's how it is now. Like we give each other hugs when we get off stage. So I'm like, dude, I can't believe we, we played a show. This is sick. Yeah. Like it used to not be like that. It was like work. It was like play a show and then work on the band, play a show, work on the band. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I understand that this time frame for interviews develop because it, this is normally when my kids are at school, except it's summer break. So now I'm just like, entertain yourselves for half an hour or whatever oh yeah no my littlest one got pink eye this uh, last oh, night and i'm like I'm dude so all my interviews i'm like it's all gonna be like <laughs> whole monday's ruined yeah. uh, i get it i get it you guys got this tour uh coming up this fall new albums coming out i mean ryan's spending half his time or more than half his time and as i lay die that's, like, that's what we say that's his kids so yeah kids. yeah uh what's what's the the future look like i mean is it just celebrate this record and then just reevaluate next year no um there will be um there will be new music before this tour okay um, so i can say that there'll be new music on the tour and yeah we're we're already working on new music um and we've been working on it before apologies was like a thing um so yeah it's everything's like i said the only difference of the band um is just our schedules but yeah. it makes the shows even better because like even this tour coming out we have like a theatrical set performance because we have so much time to plan it so it actually is probably the best shows we've ever played are coming up um so i don't know if i feel yeah i feel like i'm prestiging into a new chapter of this man. <laughs> <laughs>